Hello, everyone, and thanks for listening to the Quality Hub, chatting with ISO experts. I'm your host, Xavier Francis, and I'm here with Caitlin Wurzbach, consultant here at Core Business Solutions. So glad you could be with us today, Caitlin. Yeah, I'm happy to be with you. Awesome. Today's show is entitled, This is Fine, Everything is Fine, and we'll be talking about supplier management. But first, let's learn a little bit more about Caitlin and her experience and journey. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself, Caitlin? Yeah, of course. So I started out in this industry back in 2017, right after I graduated from college. I got a temporary position in quality, um, in a quality department for a manufacturing facility, and that's where I found my passion for this industry, basically. And since then, I've worked for a variety of companies, mostly in the manufacturing realm um, and mostly startups or smaller companies, where I was lucky to help them generate their quality management systems from the ground up. Since then, I found my next stage in the careers in consulting with Core. So now I'm on the other side of that, helping our own customers on their certification in Denver. And since starting work in my career, too, I've now gotten two master's degrees. Um, I have some internal auditor and food safety certifications. And yeah. No, and that is a great amount of experience. And wow, two masters. That's awesome. Well, to get us started off today, we're talking about supplier management. What is ISO 9001 supplier management, and why is it important for businesses? Yeah, so in relation to the standard for 9001, um, it requires that the companies must identify your outside um, either vendors or suppliers. Companies kind of use both of those names um, changeably. And anybody that's supplying the companies with any products or services. Specifically, we want to focus on suppliers that are providing the products or services that directly affect Um, the quality of the organization's output. So the outputs are the products or services that the company is providing to their customers. Right. So that's our, we're we're getting inputs from those vendors or suppliers. Yes, exactly. And then, so all of those suppliers, they must be identified, um, qualified and evaluated on a regular basis. Awesome. So what you really need to know is if they're capable of meeting your needs as a supplier or vendor. Exactly. So like you said, those are important inputs, um, the suppliers, what they're providing for the organization. So if the quality of your inputs are affected, that could make it for the company's own products or services to be undesirably affected as well. Right, right. So the when you implement a supplier management program, that kind of helps to mitigate those risks and um, properly control all of your suppliers and inputs. And then in doing so, this will ensure that you have consistent delivery of your products or services that meet your customers' requirements. That totally makes sense. So if a supplier is late with delivering you raw materials or isn't up to the specs you, uh, you require, it's going to affect your product. So that's why, exactly. that's why ISO wants you to take care of that. Exactly. There's a direct relationship there. Okay. Well, th- that is clearly important. So what are some of the key elements of an effective ISO 9001 supplier management system and what are the benefits? So some of the key elements include selecting and evaluating your suppliers. And then after that, you can establish the criteria for your supplier performance. Once you have all of your suppliers selected, there's um, it's important to keep monitoring the supplier performance and also taking any actions if there are any nonconformity or any um, deficiencies or discrepancies with any of the inputs that your suppliers are supplying you. Okay. Uh, so an effective system can consistently make sure that your suppliers are delivering your either products or services that meet not only your organization's quality standards, but then that also contributes to the quality standards for their own products, which goes into your overall customer satisfaction. So letting the supplier know the expectations of what they are getting to you and also to make sure they are followed and addressing any errors or concerns that may come up. Exactly, exactly. And when you implement an effective system, there are a couple different benefits that you can get out of. Um, So start with Um, Quality assurance. So when you have an effective system, this will help your organization ensure that the products or services that you receive from your vendors are meeting your requirements like we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. And it'll also help your system identify any risks um, prior to them happening. So you can kind of stop those issues before they happen instead of reacting to them after they happen. Being proactive that way. Exactly. You can issue some corrective actions earlier on in the system. And then another benefit would include you can get consistency and reliability from your suppliers when they're appropriately managed. You can create really good long-term relationships with them and have, like I said, the reliability with your suppliers. And then when you have consistent ones, 
as well. The turnaround time for your the organization's own products or services can be reliable, which then builds your customer trust and loyalty. Right. So you're not you're not saying, well, you know, we can't get this done because we haven't gotten the part to build it for you yet. Well, there that's not our problem. That's your problem. Exactly. Kind of alleviate some of that. Yeah, you have that reliability with your suppliers. If they give you a time that something's going to be delivered that you know for sure that will be the delivery date and you can communicate that with your customer and then you will also hit your um, on-time delivery for the own, your own customers. Correct. And then kind of like we've been discussing as well, your risk management is another benefit. Um, it allows you know the companies to assess and mitigate any risks that are associated with your supply chain. You know, supply chain has been a really big issue in the past couple of years. So this is with COVID. something that's really important. Yep. COVID really put a dent in that. So this is something that's really important when all of your suppliers are reviewed, qualified and evaluated. The issues can be addressed before they happen. It makes sense. Totally makes sense. And then so going on another benefit is looking at kind of cost and pricing. Um, when you evaluate your suppliers, you have the opportunity to identify suppliers that maybe offer competitive pricing without compromising on quality as well. So you can kind of source different suppliers, but still make sure when you're doing the assessments that you're, they're going to deliver you with quality products or services. Because, yeah, sometimes cheaper isn't always better, or I should exactly. say less expensive. Sometimes it's cheaper, you know, and maybe quality is good, but you can't rely on them. Or they're always on time, but they're suspect, you know, with the, with the specs and all that. Stuff. Exactly. You still want to do those assessments. Yeah. And then one of the last ones, too, is continuous improvement, which ISO 9001 preaches. They really enjoy the continuous improvement. So when you have a supplier management system, this requires that you continuously improve and monitor your supplier performance. If you're having issues with the suppliers, you either address them or you go find new suppliers. So there's always that improvement that goes along with keeping track of your vendors. That's that's a staple of 9001. Absolutely. Yeah. Really helps you to keep your outputs up to the level you desire for them to be. So how can businesses evaluate and select suppliers that meet ISO 9001 requirements? Yeah. So the first step is when you're evaluating or selecting your suppliers is you want to first define the supplier criteria. So this will be different based on each company, based on what products or services that they provide, but it could include things like technical specifications, um, if the suppliers are capable and experienced, pricing and availability, on-time delivery, product or service quality, and et cetera. It's really up to the organizations to determine what's important to them in their mm -hmm. supplier performances and to establish the criteria on that. Okay. And then... Once the criteria is defined and noted down, then you can start to evaluate their own current suppliers and then use the same criteria to qualify any new suppliers. So when you're first setting up a supplier, that's when you qualify them. And then and on at least a yearly basis, depending on how many suppliers, maybe more, you can evaluate them based on the same criteria and just make sure that they're still meeting those requirements that you're um, wanting your suppliers to meet. So this clearly isn't a once and done thing, you know, but you're no. checking it at least yearly. Maybe maybe if there's an, is an issue, maybe more frequently. Exactly. You know, if there's any nonconformances or anything like that. Exactly. Yeah. And then each um, one of the requirements for 9001 is also for each qualification or evaluation to be documented. So that's important to not only do it, but if you're making, if you're having discussions with them, with the team in a meeting to take notes and make sure that all of the evaluations and qualifications are recorded um, in as evidence somewhere. Makes sense. Yeah. So, and then also um, companies can perform other evaluation or selection activities. So you can send supplier questionnaires, um, you can perform supplier audits, you could request samples if you're having them deliver you any products, or you could also ask for supplier references. Sometimes it's hard to get suppliers to answer supplier questionnaires, which is why the qualifications are done more internally. But if it's a critical supplier, some of these may be important to implement. So maybe doing an on-site audit where you go to the supplier and make sure that what they're saying they're doing, they're actually doing. Right. Requesting samples, you know, looking at making sure the products are quality and up to your standard or also asking for references. So that would include asking for information from their own customers to see their feedback as well. And maybe even looking at them from a perspective, are they ISO 9001 certified? So if they're familiar with the process, they understand they're trying to do the best as well. Or you understand they're trying to do the best from a quality point as well. Exactly. And based on some other industries, there might be other certifications or requirements that organizations require their suppliers to have as well. 
Okay. Yeah. But then all of those activities too that we were discussing should be performed by personnel in the company that are actively involved in supplier management. So this could be somebody in your purchasing department, accounting department, who's ever really interacting with the suppliers and can build on that relationship should be involved in these activities. A lot of times when you're dealing with suppliers and purchase, you know, you have that purchase person that's in charge of it. You don't want to necessarily just have your um, management rep take over. You want to keep that, or maybe maybe they're part of a, a conversation, but they're not, they're not the only direct person in contact with them. Use your salespeople, exactly. use your people in, in purchasing. Exactly. I can really see how this makes a difference in confirming a supplier and that they'll function as you need them to, and with the specific requirements in mind for whatever they're supplying you. So what do you find are some of the most common challenges businesses face when they're implementing this ISO 9001 supplier management, and how can they overcome it? Some of the challenges that the business could potentially face um, include a lack of supplier information, supplier performance monitoring, supplier resistance, um, and then changing supplier and resource constraints. So one of the things is like when initially setting up suppliers in the system, if you're new to ISO 9001 certification, you probably don't have a supplier management system prior. So it might be hard to obtain the required supplier information. Maybe they're not responsive or they don't want to, you know, they haven't had to provide you with this information in the past and now they're resistant to supply it to you now. Right, right. So if it if they're resistant to give up the information organizations to combat this can develop a structured evaluation process, kind of like which we were discussing earlier. Um, mm -hmm. So this would include obtaining any, any relevant documentation, or if they're still hesitant, performing an audit or on-site visit Okay. to make sure that they're compliant with what you want them to be compliant to, and they're going to provide you with quality product. And that one, like I was saying, also ties into supplier resistance. So some suppliers might not be willing to comply with the new ISO regulations that the company is implementing. So it's important to engage in open conversations with the suppliers and communicate the importance of complying to what you're asking them to. You guys are implementing ISO to improve, maybe have that conversation with them and get them to understand it's a good thing for the business. Um, you're going to improve and the information that the, you're asking for is important for you guys as a company to provide quality products or services to your customers. Absolutely. I can see why there would be pushback. I mean, you know, hey, we've worked with you for 10 years. We've never had issues. Now you're requiring me to do this stuff. Exactly. So you really do have to make it clear that you're implementing a quality management system and you have a requirement for that. So you got to do what you got to do. You know? Exactly. Mm -hmm. You got to say, hey, this is this is just so we can, you know, we know you're good. We just have to make sure that it's written down and we know and we can prove it uh, for our quality management system. For sure. And then another thing uh, that might be hard to implement is monitoring, continuously monitoring your supplier performance, um, especially if a company has a large number of suppliers. You know, we work with companies that either have maybe like five, and then we work with companies that have like 200 suppliers. So if you're on the higher side of suppliers, it might be hard to do yearly evaluations on each of the suppliers. So if you're having a hard time monitoring your performance, you can implement some key performance indicators or some KPIs okay. to track performance. Um, so some of those things, you know, on a weekly, monthly, maybe quarterly basis, you can document and record on-time delivery or a number of non-conformances that were generated for a supplier. And then there's also some data collection software tools that can help streamline your data analysis to help consistently monitor your supplier's performance. And I guess that also depends on how frequently you get something from a supplier too. If you get something once or twice a year, I mean, how can you evaluate them every three months? Exactly. So it's probably easy for those. And if you have 200 of them, hey, they've always been on time. You know, if you have those KPIs in place, they're hitting these when we do get something from them, then we don't have to worry about it. Exactly. Each company is going to have a little bit different of situations and they just kind of have to, you have to evaluate based on what your organization needs. And I've worked with some companies that only focus on maybe the top 10% or the top like 20 of their important suppliers. So there's different ways to evaluate that. So if it is something you get once a year, maybe the, that's not a high level of importance so that you don't keep that as part of your scope. Right. You kind of do a risk analysis on what's going to be most pertinent to the quality of our products or services and then focus on those. And you're talking about there's some software tools that can help you. I know we have the core compliance platform. We have some of those tools as well, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. So Core actually has some built-in auto forms for your supplier qualifications and supplier evaluations. So not only would this help with data, but they actually have some really cool features like reminding you when your supplier evaluations are due, notifying you if any information is missing. 
um, and when you have to perform your yearly evaluation. So that's always nice. You can never forget them. We'll be sending email reminders to make sure that those are performed. And then we also have some forms for tracking your quality objectives. So you could put your KPIs like on-time delivery or non-conformances into those forms. And we have really cool tools for running different reports, depending on what kind of data analysis you want to look at, depending on what data points, there's different trends analysis opportunities in core that you can use for those. And there's a different way of looking at the data. There's some graphs and some other types of things that help you to kind of get a visual of what's going on. Yeah. If you're more of a visual person instead of a number person, there's graphs and charts that you can visually look at in there. And then kind of going back to the other risk to one of the last risks is that initially when supplier management systems are developed, there may be some growing pains, especially if you're realizing that your suppliers that you already have are having a lot of issues and now you have to go outsource new suppliers. Um, you might have supplier consolidation. So maybe you realize that you can be getting more products or services from fewer suppliers. Mm -hmm. And that'll kind of issue some growing change. You might have some supplier disruptions. If you know a supplier you're having issues with, now you have to source it from somewhere else. Maybe there's a delay in receiving those products or services. So it's just important to do the risk assessments and, you know, always just stay on top of your suppliers and making sure that you're getting your products and services on time and that they're quality and what you guys are looking for. Right. Communicate any supplier disruptions you might have you know, to your customers as well. Exactly. Well, we have spoken about risk recently in the past on the podcast, and but doing an analysis on suppliers really does make sense. This is one of the biggest parts, if you're a manufacturer, especially of getting the materials you need to build what you need to make. Exactly. And then one of the last you know, growing pains that a company might realize that they have is that implementing and maintaining the supplier management system really requires dedicated resources. So this could include personnel, training on the new systems, and also time and financial investments if you're going to look for some software programs to help you manage those. So it's important to establish clear responsibilities. So let your employees know who's responsible for supplier communication, supplier evaluations, and things like that. And also make sure that you have the necessary resources for the management system. Certainly can see this having a cost as far as time, money, and potential disruption, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, but the benefits in the end can really be worth it because now you have security of what you're dealing with when it comes to your suppliers and your vendors. And if you have problems, you have something in place that you can do to help correct it. Exactly. Well, this is a ton of great information, and it certainly can make a difference in your QMS. So you've obviously got a lot of experience in this. Do you have any story or an example of working with a company who's really done a good job with their managing of their suppliers and vendors? Yeah, of course. Um, so one company that comes to mind, they were in the medical industry, and they manufactured different parts or certain devices for medical customers. Um, they recognized early on that their suppliers were really critical for delivering quality products to their customers. And they took initiative like right away. So they established the criteria for their suppliers that believed would help maintain their own high standards for their products. So for them specifically, they looked at on-time delivery and product quality and also technical specifications. You know, mm -hmm. being in the medical industry, yeah. they have really precise <laughs> yeah, requirements. You kind of have to be precise in medical <laughs> exactly. stuff. Exactly. So they made sure, you know, all of the products matched what technical specifications they were requiring to their suppliers. And then prior to even using any suppliers, they would conduct thorough assessments. On occasion, they would even do the on-site audits. Um, they sent out supplier questionnaires. Them being in the medical device industry also required that their suppliers had certain certifications. So they would get a copy of those certifications from their suppliers and keep those on file. And then when qualifying the suppliers, they reviewed all of their processes and capabilities to make sure that they were aligned with their own requirements. And then once they were selected and added on to their approved supplier list, they would communicate with them to establish the quality guidelines, any specifications and all of the expectations. Wow. They really took, took the reins and went with that, didn't they? Yeah, they definitely did. And then especially after once they already had all of them qualified to, if there were any issues or even opportunities for improvement, the company would address those right away with the suppliers. So they had really good open communication and effective communication lines with their suppliers. And then on a regular basis, and they had only a select few suppliers, so they would do supplier evaluations on a quarterly basis. Um, they would evaluate their suppliers with thorough discussions and they would note any discrepancies or issues. So they recorded all of their evaluations, made sure that any notes or action items were mentioned and 
recorded for future meetings. And because they implemented their supplier management system effectively, they were actually able to improve their customer satisfaction and their operational efficiencies. That's great. They were able to create some of their products more on time, um, which obviously contributed to their customer satisfaction. Absolutely. And probably with being medical, I mean, we've all heard about shortages. Mm -hmm. You know, you could you could really have a problem with that. And they've really taken that the steps to make sure that doesn't happen, which is great. That's really awesome. Exactly. Really want to thank you for being here and sharing your experiences and clearly your expertise and all the ways supplier management can help your quality management system and your business overall. Yeah, I was happy to be here and talk with you about it today. Great. And we want to thank you all who have listened to our podcast today. We hope it's been informative for you. And if you haven't already followed us on your favorite podcast platform, be sure to do so so you won't miss the Quality Hub podcast when it's released next week. Thanks so much and have a great day.